recently I got to play Shadowrun for the first time ever and I was so excited that even though it was a one shot I went ahead and drew a character portrait for my character and I used it as my icon on discord and in the game um, for the whole night and for uh, a while after <laughs> I'm currently as of this video I'm still using this character icon as my icon on Discord. So Shadowrun is a cyberpunk setting and cyberpunk is really cool. It's very visually and thematically appealing to me. There's a lot of dystopian darkness <laughs> that I really, really adore. Um, those of you who know me well know that I really love horror and in extension, I like other things that are really dark. I do enjoy dark fantasy and I do enjoy other settings where you can play with these themes in in a space where it's appropriate to. As I mentioned before, this was a one shot. It was our usual uh, Saturday D&D group, uh, minus two of our players. Uh, sadly, they couldn't join us. But our current DM was having just some fatigue and instead of him running uh, one of our players named Max he offered to run a one shot of of cyber um, shadow run <laughs> so what ended up happening was we sat down in a call me one of the other players and Max this other player I'm going to call by her character name spider Spider made a human techno mage, uh, something that was in the recommended section of the book. And uh, the other player, which is our usual DM, uh, he made a character named Komug, which is an orc street samurai. Again, something else that you can find in the book. I had no idea what I wanted to play. I like leaning into theme when I'm playing something that's very themed. I feel like if you're presented with a specific theme and you don't play with it, you could be playing anything. So I wanted to do something really cyberpunky, and then I just didn't. <laughs> I was looking through stuff and I was thinking, you know, maybe I'll be a hacker, maybe I'll be this, maybe I'll be that. And then I saw a page where it was this a young woman character and this was just a template that they had and she was this paranormal investigator and she had tattoos and her hair was blowing and <laughs> and she I think if I'm trying to remember it off the top of my head I think her eyes were glowing and all this stuff and I just like I want to be her so <laughs> um I thought about what it was that made her her and I talked with my DM and I went with making a troll named Graves, who is also a paranormal investigator. And <laughs> as you can see, he's not a very pretty, you know, young lady with spooky glowing eyes and beautiful lustrous hair. <laughs> I do have um, a huge, huge draw to these beautiful and aesthetic things. I think we all do in some way, but I have a deep, deep love and appreciation for characters that aren't supposed to be the most pretty. And uh, I like monsters. I like trolls. I like things like that. And hearing what trolls are like and how they're treated and in the setting and like their sort of backstory, I gravitated towards it and it was cool because I got to be the only troll in the group which made it feel a little extra special to me so thus was born Graves so Graves whole thing is um, he doesn't actually use much tech he doesn't like it <laughs> so I'm kind of playing against theme he doesn't have any extra cybernetics, which is something you can do. He doesn't have any special knowledge about 
computers or all these other, like, there's, you know, sci-fi stuff that borders on magic and magic stuff that borders on sci-fi within cyberpunk. I guess, I guess the line between magic and tech gets blurred beautifully in, in Shadowrun. So we look through everything <laughs> and I keep chuckling to myself because the game session, I can't remember exactly how long it lasted, maybe four hours. Um, character creation took about three and it took two days. <laughs> so all in all, it took almost as long to make the characters as it did to play the one session. And we rushed through character creation. We didn't discuss anything too deeply. Anything we had questions on, of course, our DM, Max, explained it very enthusiastically and very uh, thoroughly so we would understand what we were picking and choosing. And he was very generous with, like, telling us that might not come up in a one-shot, so if you want something more effective, maybe pick this or that. And I ended up really liking Graves. He has five spells, three of which were based around healing, which I ended up not needing to use, and two were crowd control abilities. One was called Chaos and one was called Confusion. Both of those spells basically do the same thing, only one affects things that are physical and one affects things that are... I believe it's called mana based. <laughs> Anybody that knows this system, I'm so sorry if you're cringing at my inability to remember specifics. But effectively what it ended up doing was making the uh, person or thing that I casted chaos or confusion on. They have a minus to their uh, dice pool, I believe, or, or their dice results and that was helpful and then on top of that I had a gun so that was great <laughs> so it was mostly a lot of you know chaos chaos pew 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 and then the other two just wrecked face and it was it was a really good time <laughs> um the characters of Spider and Komug were really really fun to play against there wasn't a lot of time for a role play so we had a quick backstory of why we all worked together. We were all shadow runners. We lived in a bad part of town, but it sounds like in Shadowrun, every part of town is a bad part of town. And we've worked on things before. We'll work on things again. And I even told the DM, hey, if you want to do more of this, I love this game. I love this character. Please, please, please run another one for us if our, uh, if Coma doesn't want to DM. Playing Shadowrun with Max as our DM was extremely cool. I have played a D&D game with Max before. He was our DM for a few years in a setting that I love to refer to as Mad Max, but at winter uh, or perpetual winter. And <laughs> that's, that's a story for another time. But this one shot and with the old... Uh, D, D game, Max puts a lot of love and care into building his maps, making his NPCs, even throwaway NPCs that we like met and had to kill in combat right away. The voices that he used, the lingo that these characters used, all made the world feel so much more alive. And I, I love role playing and I love tabletop gaming and having people that are just as passionate about it makes it all the more worthwhile playing. So the story that we went through, uh, us shadow runners, we were drawn out due to a disturbance out of our little building that we were sort of squatting in for a while and running our business out of. And when we went out, we noticed that there was uh, somebody being kidnapped and it was just some local gang called the Halloweeners, which um, I don't know if they are specific to Shadowrun or something Max made up, but they were really cool. <laughs> <laughs> 
and we saved her and she told us that she was in this part of town looking for some shadow runners and we were like all right and i got to do a business role because i had a business ability and i botched it and i didn't get us anything more but <laughs> it was cool to have and maybe we'll come up if we do another one and we all agreed to work on this job in short the job itself was to infiltrate a building and destroy uh, some of the stuff that they were working on there something about Shadowrun's world that is very unique to it um, as far as a tabletop setting they have the concept of of corporations as um, they're their own sort of location. If you were to step onto corporation land, everything is is up to them. It's by it, you play by their rules on their land, I guess. <laughs> I'm not really sure how to explain it any better, but instead of if there was a disturbance instead of them calling local police, they use their own police within corp land. It's, it's, <laughs> it feels very appropriate for uh, the times we are living in. And I firmly, firmly believe that the people that designed this game and made the lore for this game had very, very strong political opinions. And uh, it's reflected how they feel about a lot of things in the world and um, just how they feel about corporations, how they feel about the state of the world, how they feel about just, I mean, everything. <laughs> it, it's a lot, it's very dense and I, I'm sitting here wondering, what should I share? And you know, it's, it's better if you look into it because if this sounds even remotely interesting, do some reading on it. It's really good. <laughs> So we go into this building, we uh, head on up to the top floor, there was some fighting, there was some trickery, there was no sneaking. <laughs> we could not sneak at all. Um, but we get up there and we find this room and they're running experiments on, on people and it's, it's, again, like I said, it's pretty dark and it was really great to complete that adventure and and like any adventure in a tabletop game it was very cathartic and very fun and definitely something that was while similar in concept to any of these other tabletop games very unique unto itself so with this art uh i'm really happy that i did it um just a little comment on the art itself i've been working really hard lately and I've been drawing a lot more regularly and I've been getting a lot of feedback and I asked some friends for advice and I'm playing with how I do my inking. I do a lot of thick dark outlines and I don't want them to be bland and, and flat and that's how I've been feeling about it lately. So I'm really happy with the uh, hash marks or cross hatching in here and some of the stuff I've been doing with that and the lighting, I really just did quick lighting because by the time I was finished this, I was actually streaming this and it was way past my bedtime. I was so tired. Um, I think it was about another hour that I stayed up and I just worked on this just to get it done, just so I'd have it. I kind of went back and forth. I was working on some comic pages too and I just couldn't focus on that. I wanted to get this done so badly. So I stopped and came back and stopped and came back and I almost didn't ink it. I was going to paint it. I, I just, every stop along the way, I, was, I thought this is it. This is where I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to play with it anymore. And then I was like, well, no, maybe, maybe one more. And this is what I came up with. Uh, normally I like to add some deeper shadow values, um, maybe a, a better rim light than what I have here. I think that's what it's called or bounce lighting the one where it's around the edge I wanted to do a little bit more of that but 
I think I'm just happy with where it is, especially for what it is, <laughs> especially for the fact that I was only using it once. So I feel like I got to apply a lot of stuff that I learned recently to this piece. And I'm also applying some of these inking effects to my comic. So I'm really happy with it. And that was my first shadow run experience. Uh, I, I hope it was coherent. <laughs> Uh, if you're even remotely interested in playing Shadowrun, it is hard to make the characters, so maybe find a veteran and just try it out. It's really, really cool. And thank you for watching this video. If you are interested in, you know, the comic that I mentioned or in the streams that I mentioned, I do have links below. Please do check them out. Thank you again, and I hope you enjoyed. Take care. Bye.